In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the current conditions. We're going to be updating you guys on that upcoming major blizzard and also the upcoming severe weather outbreak. Let's get straight into this video. And first things first, we're looking at the current radar imagery as always. And there's a few things going on again, kind of like the other past couple of days. Uh, we're not looking at anything major, thankfully, in the nation. But there is some more interesting areas of storminess, like here in the northwest, where we have some heavier snowfall going on. I guess that's almost major, but for the Cascades, it's kind of expected. Uh, for here, we are starting to see a storm start up. Uh, for areas like Colorado, uh, Wyoming up there as well as Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, and a bit of Minnesota in there. Uh, we also have some showers around for the northeastern corner of the country. This has been going on for a while here. Uh, a lot of this is, is kind of enhanced by the lakes as well, so we'll zoom into those areas and take a look. But overall, it's a quieter look, and I think we're going to be able to blast right past this real quickly. Let's take a look first off at the Northwest, just like always. And as you can see, uh, there's clearly some sort of spin going on, indicating that there's a low pressure system pretty much right over you guys right now. I think it moved in just about like this. Um, and now it's over you guys. And we're seeing snowfall for this region in here. Heavy at times, we see some blues showing up. That's indicating very heavy snowfall for these areas. Uh, we're also seeing rainfall here for the valleys in between with some snowfalls up here for these mountainous regions over here. So again, snowfall in these areas I'm circling here, uh, also for here, uh, but basically rainfall for these valleys in between and in the, in the low-lying coastal regions mostly in here. Um, and there is some heavier rainfall in there as well, so you're going to be wanting to look out for that also. But obviously in this region, we're kind of used to those types of conditions, so it's not too crazy. Uh, for the northern Rockies up here, we do have some snowfall showers in here, so for these areas. Uh, and then we have some snowfall and rainfall showers up here for more of the lower elevation areas in Montana. But within this region, we do have some snowfall ongoing for some of those mountainous regions. And then we move on to this kind of bigger overall storm system. Um, and we can see it's kind of stretching along these areas. We do see some snowfall here for the southern Rockies. And also these higher elevation plain regions here for western Nebraska and western South Dakota. These areas, even though they're not completely mountainous, uh, they are higher elevation. So we tend to get colder temperatures over here uh, in snowier conditions and types of storms like this. And that's exactly what you're seeing here in western Nebraska there, uh, right about there. There is, again, just like uh, I was saying for some of the other regions, some heavier rainfall in here. You're going to be wanting to watch out for that as well for some potential flooding impacts depending on where you live. There's a lot that that depends on, but that is a possibility, of course, with heavier rainfall. Uh, we do have these showers that are just kind of moving across the eastern United States. Very, very minor. Uh, there is a heavier pocket, and I guess a more consistent pocket, that's located in here. But... Outside of that, it is just more minor, very, very isolated showers going on. This is the area I was talking about where it looks like it's being enhanced by the lakes here. As you can see, as these moved over the lakes, they became a lot more persistent. And there is some snowfall in here, especially for these higher elevation regions in Pennsylvania and New York. So kind of uh, this hilly region and then up into here. All those areas are kind of seeing some snowfall. Uh, and that could accumulate. That is a pretty persistent area. So I wouldn't be surprised if maybe an inch dusting, inch, two inches maybe, uh, in some of the heavier pockets was to happen in some of the mountain tops in there. So that wouldn't surprise me one bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at that model guidance where we're going to see the overall pattern. We're also going to see the temperature pattern. Uh, and really overall, we're just going to take a look into that big time blizzard that's going to be taking place and also uh, the severe weather outbreak as well we need to talk about. All right, so here is kind of the precipitation pattern according to the European model. We can see this storm that we've been looking at in here. Uh, we're going to watch that. Also, the low pressure system in here. These showers should move off shore, so let's watch that play out. Uh, so that storm builds into a 992, but overall, it's not super major, the impacts that it's bringing. Uh, there will be some snowfall to the north, obviously. There will be some uh, severe weather impacts to the south. We'll see that build in in a couple of frames, but I want you to pay attention. There's some snow building in for here as our next low pressure system moves in, and that will eventually be our blizzard. Uh, but watch this area in here, kind of to the east of that low pressure system right here, because I think we're going to see some development in here. Yeah, there it is. It's not exactly where I drew it, but there will be some thunderstorm development in here. And this low pressure system kind of develops too. So there's low pressure around, and that's kind of what encourages that 
uh, thunderstorm development. So tonight there will be some severe weather. We're going to take a look at that at the end of the video when we take a look at the Storm Prediction Center. So we will break that down even further, rest assured. Uh, you can always use the categories on the slider bar down below to find where we're talking about the severe weather if you just want to skip to that. I want to remind you guys of that as well. Here's that major blizzard coming on shore, 993 millibar low pressure center right off the bat, and it's going to take a track about like this. Uh, and that horseshoe, we've been talking about this for days, it's probably repetitive, but that's going to allow for these areas to see prolonged periods of snowfall for sure. Let's just take a look at that. Now, we see it quickly kind of horseshoe around like this, and these areas get probably, let's well, let's see how long of snowfall they get. So snow showers start popping up around maybe 11 p.m. on Monday or tomorrow. And that's at least 24 hours of snowfall. And then we get those showers kind of hanging out. So I would say 24 to maybe even pushing on 36 or 48 hours if you're counting like the snow showers that are lasting after and starting up before. Uh, but at least 24 hours of that persistent heavy snowfall. And that's why this will be uh, a pretty impactful snowstorm. But not only these Rockies regions, pay attention to up here in the Northern Plains. Or I'll draw a bigger circle. Up here, I think we get even longer of snowfall. So snow starts around uh, maybe 11 a.m. on Tuesday. It's 11 a.m. on Wednesday, so that's 24 hours right there. Yeah, for North Dakota, it's going on for at least 48 hours here. Pay attention to right there. Oh, right here. Just deleted it. Uh, so snow starts out around, again, 11 a.m. on Tuesday. There's 11 a.m. on Wednesday. And definitely by 11 a.m. on Thursday. That's 2 p.m. on Thursday and even uh, 8 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, snow could still be going on. So maybe even beyond 48 hours for these regions. So uh, I also want you to pay attention to this, this violent temperature pattern we're in as well because I'm focusing on this blizzard but we have a serious cold front developing underneath this a very serious warm front obviously there and just tons of warm air surging northward like this uh, and we're expecting a severe weather outbreak from this obviously with the very strong low pressure system the violent uh, temperature uh, pattern we're in here uh, and just watch this area in here how much thunderstorm development happens so this is for um well, first off, this is Monday night. We see some development in there. Uh, and then Tuesday night, there we go. Look at all that development in there east of the low pressure system. Um, and then here's for Wednesday. That's going to be about 2 p.m. on Wednesday. Um, and then even after Wednesday, I think like Thursday time frame, we could be watching these regions because we still have this storminess here. Uh, so I think it's worth noting that there could be thunderstorms throughout this entire region as those move through on Thursday. Uh, and then pretty much everything moves offshore, but we get a bit of a nor'easter there. Look at that. Uh, kind of in the area I drew. Watch this. <laughs> Big nor'easter potentially. And then um, we'll move on to that in a second. With this blizzard, I want to take a look at the total snowfall real quickly here. Uh, so let me see. Zoom into the west, and then let's turn on total snowfall here. Let me let it play out all the way. Okay, so we noticed the highest snowfall amounts are either for these regions, obviously the Cascades and Sierra Nevadas. We have a lot for the Rockies as well, uh, and then also the northern plains up here, which we'll zoom into the north central United States in a second. Um, but I want you guys to note that it, uh, the grades are going to be about a dusting, if anything. You'll see snow is what this model is indicating, basically. Two to six inches of snowfall in the blues. Purples are going to be six to ten. Pinks will be ten to twenty. And then the pastel blues will be twenty to thirty. And then as we kind of move into these pastel purples, we see some of that in this circle here. And some of this up here as well. And a lot of it here. So that purple in the blue, kind of. I, I hate the color codes, how there's like multiple pinks, multiple blues. It makes it a little bit confusing. Those will be about 36 to 48 inches plus, but the max in here is somewhere in its 78 inches. We can see that on the bottom right hand side of your screen. Now let's move up to the north central United States and take a look at what's going on up here. Because obviously we have very high amounts in this region, kind of northeastern North Dakota, and then northern Minnesota there as well. 
uh, where we have these 20 inch plus amounts. We can see some numbers on screen, which make it a little bit easier. But yeah, about 20 to 30 inches plus maximum in here somewhere, 40 inches, it's probably somewhere in this region there. Um, so anywhere from about 20 to 40 inches of snowfall will fall in this region most likely. Um, and 10 inches plus for all of the pink regions. So very high snowfall amounts, absolutely wild stuff. Uh, let's just go back to the national view. Let's go back to precipitation type. And let's take a look at these storms, okay? Because we have that nor'easter that I talked about. It's probably going to head up like this. And the models have been pretty inconsistent with it. They think it's going to track, um, like, anything in between this. We've se I've seen a lot of them, them try to show it tracking over the land, which would probably be the most impactful solution this time of year. If it was, the, the you know, the, the middle of winter, you would, you would probably be looking for that to be offshore for the biggest snowfall impacts. But since that's not going to be a big risk regardless except for the Appalachian Mountains, which will happen regardless as long as there's precipitation. The most impactful track would be over land. Uh, least impactful would be way offshore. Um, so I've seen everything in between these two, basically, these two tracks with this. So watch watch it develop and watch which one it takes. It's kind of the in-between, but I'd say it's more towards the out-to-sea option there, as you can see. Especially as we get towards the northeastern United States, this is going to be Friday the 15th. Saturday the 16th, and then Sunday the 17th there. Um, I would say it's much closer to this one over here, uh, the offshore option. Although for the southeast, it still brings plenty of impacts in there as it tracks over these regions, as you can see. Maybe, maybe even brings impacts up to my neck of the woods in Virginia here. It looks like some precipitation making its way up there. But really, uh, anywhere north of that circle I drew, uh, it, it kind of doesn't bring many impacts. All right. Now, after that, this is going to be about Monday, Sunday, Monday time frame, 17th, 18th. We kind of get left with this little bit of showery pattern in here. Um, that's by Monday the 18th. And then by Tuesday, we get another strong low pressure system with a strong cold front here, warm front up here. Uh, and this could bring some severe weather further east than we've been seeing for the most part. Uh, and that looks like a major storm as well. That would be very, very interesting. Uh, we have a pattern that looks about like this and what's unusual about this is we've mostly been seeing these cool downs start in the west like this but this one kind of just pops up out of nowhere in my opinion and just really dives down to the central united states so to me this is exciting because i have to talk about the weather every single day and we've been stuck in a pattern since like january where we see persistent troughs entering into the western united states and then moving across the entire country and this right here is the first sign that I've seen since January that we might be changing the pattern that we're in towards something else um, in, in a more long-term fashion. So that's kind of exciting to me, but I, I don't know. And we'll have to see. This is hours 240, basically. But this looks very different than what we've been seeing for the most part for a very long time. Uh, and that's really, really cool to me. But I'm just a weather nerd, so uh, probably most people don't feel the same way I do. Let's take a look at those temperature patterns, though, from the European model, because I want to break that down. So here we are. Let's just move through with this. We're in a colder pattern right now in the east, colder pattern out west. And there's some warmth in between. But really, for these regions, the most significant switch is that over the next... Let me draw that again. I didn't. I keep nominating to, to delete it, and then it just goes away. We can see that it's very cold in this region for the most part outside of um, down here in kind of the south central United States. Over time, we see this really warm up. So again, Sunday, Monday, and then to Tuesday, we're seeing significant warming every single day and also significant cooling for these regions. Watch this. They're a little bit below normal, but again, they have some warmer areas too, but we cool significantly over that time period we warm significantly over the east all the way through through midweek this is wednesday i mean this is very cold out west and very warm in the east so thursday let's see clearly this is when we have a low the low pressure system about here and the cold front's about like this and the warm front's way up there so we're probably seeing strong winds carrying northward like this and then these violent cold winds coming in with the cold front. And that's just going to allow for a lot of severe weather activity. Then eventually it tries to center itself over the east. But for us warm lovers for this time of year, it doesn't get quite as cold as it could. So that's kind of good news. But look at this. Uh, I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, the cold is centered here. A little less cold here. 
and then warmer here. So kind of a jet stream that looks about like this in my opinion. And we're stuck in that from Thursday the 14th. I mean, it still kind of has that look all the way on Wednesday the 20th, and that's a big pattern change. This has usually been something where in transition from west to east we've seen this type of a look, but usually it's been like this, and then it would flip to like this. But it wouldn't stay where the trough is centered over the central United States. I hope that's not too confusing. But we're kind of getting stuck in the middle, which is a big, big look at a potential pattern change. So I think that's definitely worth noting and very, very interesting in my opinion. Let's go ahead and talk about the Storm Prediction Center, though, because we have a ton to break down in this video. It's probably already getting insanely long. Here's the day one categorical outlook. We have uh, three general thunderstorm risk areas, one there for the northwest, one here for kind of the northern plains, and then one here kind of for the south central United States up through the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes. That's where general thunderstorms are expected. Severe weather is always possible, so you're going to want to pay attention to that, but really it's not expected. Here in this darker green area here for Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and surrounding regions, that's where we're in a marginal risk of severe weather. An isolated severe weather is possible in there, um, but we don't expect like a severe weather outbreak or anything today. Although, again, anything is possible, so just heed all those warnings and watches regardless. Uh, in the yellow area, we have a slight risk for Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and Arkansas, and that's where scattered severe weather is going to start to be possible, a little bit worse impacts. Let's go ahead and take a look at those individual outlooks. Uh, here's the day one wind outlook, and this is all within 25 miles of a given location, by the way, with the percentages, so keep that in mind. It's all within 25 miles of a given location. We have a 5% chance of damaging wind here in the green region, a 15% chance of damaging wind here within the yellow region. Here is the hail outlook, and we didn't really see much change. So again, 5 in the green, 15 in the yellow there for hail as well, and wind. Here's the tornado. We have a 2% chance there in the green there for Oklahoma, Kansas, Arkansas, and Missouri, um, which is going to be kind of your lowest level. You can be outside of under 2%. Let's move on and talk about day two. Things get a little bit worse here towards day two. We have four general thunderstorm risks here, one there for the West Coast, one there for kind of the Rockies, in my opinion, and then one there for the upper Midwest, and then one large one here for kind of the interior eastern United States and the south central United States. Again, general thunderstorm risks uh, basically means that there's general thunderstorms expected, but no severe weather is necessarily expected, although all things are possible. Marginal risk is, again, the isolated severe weather risk, and this is a pretty large region to, uh, tomorrow for the green region. Again, tomorrow is Monday, April 11th, by the way. Uh, we have our slight risk in here, and that's where scattered severe weather is expected uh, with a little bit of worse impacts. Let's take a look at those individual out outlooks for day two as well. Uh, damaging wind, we have a 5% chance here in the green, and then a 15% chance there in the yellow. Uh, and then for hail, uh, we have also a 5% chance in the green, and then a 15% chance there also in the yellow, which gets a little bit larger here on the hail outlook versus the wind outlook. But we also have that hatched area there for Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, which indicates two-inch diameter or more hail uh, is going to be a possibility, according to the Storm Prediction Center, on this date, which is considered significantly large hail, obviously. So we expect very large hail to be possible tomorrow on Monday. So be on the lookout for that if you live in these regions. That could be, obviously, a pretty large concern. Then as we move towards uh, the tornado outlook here, we have a 2% chance there in the green and then a 5% chance there within the browns. So we have a much larger chance of tornadoes tomorrow, unfortunately. That doesn't mean to not pay attention today, but that means to pay attention to both. But Monday could be even worse. Day three here, things get even worse. We have three general thunderstorm risks here, one for the northwest, one there for the four corner states, and then one very, very large one here in the eastern United States. And in the lighter green, general thunderstorms are expected. Uh, and then there in the darker green, we have a marginal risk where isolated severe weather is expected in that very large region. We have a very large slight risk on this date as well, where scattered severe weather is expected. And then we have also a significantly sized enhanced risk there from Texas, Oklahoma, all the way up through Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and Iowa as well. And that is where widespread severe weather starts to become possible uh, with even worse impacts. And this is just a concerning look overall, just based on how... Um, how large all of these areas are, um, and this could be a really, really big day, Tuesday, um, April 12th, so be, mark that date, I mean, really, this could be a bad severe weather day, and the unfortunate thing is, as we move towards the extended range here, day four, 
uh, Wednesday, April 13th could be even worse because this yellow area translates to a slight risk of severe weather and this orange area translates to an enhanced risk of severe weather. So we expect very, very bad severe weather in there, maybe even higher than an, an enhanced risk there within the orange based on how big they made that region. So we're going to be on the lookout for all of these things. For today's confidence tab, we're actually out of five out of six. We moved closer to this event, and I actually just feel more confident in it overall uh, today versus yesterday. So that's why we've gone up on the confidence tab uh, by one level. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dove Nagel, Litter the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also thank our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cuddle, Lassie Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Colisi also. I would also thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.